So let's look at a particular problem, okay? So Andy and Beth are playing a game with a coin. Andy wins if the coin shows heads, and Beth wins if the coin shows tails. So quite a simple, basic uh, little game. Beth wins four consecutive times. Andy complains that the coin must be biased. Test at the 5% significance level whether his complaint is justified. OK, so we've got this simple game that's being played. And because the coin has been flipped four times and four uh, tails have come up, Andy thinks that the coin must be biased. OK, so we're going to determine whether we have evidence to support that claim or evidence against that claim. OK, so first of all, what we do is we want to set up the situation. OK, and we need to first determine what we're going to call P, P being the probability. So or in other words, what does P represent? So let P be the probability of getting heads, for example. OK, now I appear to have some freedom here because I can choose to either look at the situation from Andy's point of view. So I'm letting P be the probability of getting a heads. Or I can look at the probability of from um, Beth's point of view and look at the probability of getting tails. Okay, but I've gone for this way. We then set up what I, what I talked about in the previous video: the null and alternative hypotheses. The null hypothesis is the devil's advocate position, and that says, well, the coin's probably going to be fair. OK, so the, we're going to set P to be 1 half or 0 0.5. So let P be 0 0.5. But Andy is claiming that the probability of getting a heads is less than the probability of getting a tails. So Andy is suggesting that the probability is actually less than 0 0.5. So the alternative hypothesis is P is less than 0 0.5, OK? So we then need to conduct the actual test. That sets up the problem. So what we then say is, well, assuming H0 is true, OK? So what we're going to do is we're going to look at it from H0's point of view and assume that it's true and set up a binomial distribution based on this. So we're going to let x be binomially distributed with an n of the number of times, the number of trials. So we've got four. There were four trials. And the probability of p, 0.5. OK? So we then need to look at the probability of x being less than or equal to 0. Now, hold on a minute. You're going to probably be looking at that and going, well, why haven't I just written down probability of x being equal to 0? Because that is clearly exactly the same as this. And I agree with you, it is. What I want to highlight is the fact that this inequality symbol here goes in the same direction as that one. So these go in the same direction. So if that's less than, that's less than. OK, so make that clear. So probability of x being less than or equal to 0 is a probability that I can calculate either using the formula, but I'm going to go straight to the tables. OK, so we get our formula booklet. OK, so here's a copy of the formula booklet, and we're going to go to the binomial distribution tables that are in the back of the book. So this is on page 12. So hopefully you know where these are by now. So we're going to go down to n is 4. So n is 4, and then the probability of 0 0.5, 
and we're looking at when x is 0. So that would be 0 0.0625. So 0 0.0625. Now, what that means is, well, 0 0.0625 is actually larger than the 5% significance level that I've been asked to use. Okay, So that's larger than 0.05, the 5%. So what that means is that my probability hasn't quite reached that significance level. It's not within that boundary from 0 to 5%. Okay, So it hasn't made it there. And so, because it is outside of the critical region, as we will later call it, that means that I have no evidence to reject H0, the null hypothesis. So, in other words, we fail to reject H0. And because we fail to reject H0, that means that there is insufficient evidence to say that the coin may be biased. OK? So, as I said in the previous video, this was going to seem fairly woolly. But ultimately, it's all about building a case for or against the null hypothesis and determining how much, if the evidence you have, uh, works in favour of it or not. So these are the steps that we must go through when we answer a, a hypothesis testing question. We start off all the time, make sure you write the line, let P be the probability of. Okay. Then we have the null and alternative hypotheses. We then assume H0 is true and set up the binomial distribution. We then calculate the probability that we need, compare it with the 5% significance level. This will either reject H0 or fail to reject H0. And then we must write a final conclusive, well, concluding statement uh, in context with the original problem. Okay, so what we're going to do next is we're going to see how I can change this problem very slightly and show how this will change the values.